In the early 70s, a Hungarian psychologist called Laszlo Polgar realized that geniuses are not born, they are made. So as soon as her first child was born, he went on a mission to transform her into a world-class chess player, starting from scratch. 20 years later, and two more sisters came, and they all became grand masters. This video is about the four specific things that made this transformation possible, that I leveraged back in the day to go from architect to private equity director in 30 months instead of 15 years, and now I apply to build my business fast and help our clients do the same. Welcome back. I'm Leon Castillo, founder of Submaster Peak Performance Institute for Entrepreneurs, we help you scale fast with peak clarity, focus, discipline, and self-belief so you can win at the game of business. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so never miss out on any of the videos that we publish to make you a better entrepreneur. So this video is about one of the most exciting experiments I've ever read about in psychology, the Polgar experiment. And the idea that Laszlo Polgar had was to prove the point that geniuses are made, not born. So he committed on transforming his children into world-class chess player, and they all ended up becoming the first female grand masters. Since the day they were born, they were home school. They played against each other every single day and also against others. They attended tournament and all of their education was directed towards becoming elite chess players. They lived and breathed chess every single day of the week. Polgar chose chess because how it objectively measures success. There's no doubt on what is your ranking or skill level in chess. It's just a matter of how many games have you won against similarly ranked opponents. Turns out that the eldest, Susan, became the first grandmaster in 1991. The second one, also had a fantastic performance in the 1988 Rome Championship. And the youngest, Judith, is considered the best female chess player in history. In other words, Laszlo Polgar was right. His hunch proved out to be true. Greatness is made, not born. He leveraged all sorts of tricks from neuroscience, psychology, and behavioral science to transform those kids that were a tabula rasa, a total blank slate. Nobody is born knowing how to play chess. He himself had no experience with chess. There were no genetic advantage, no special talent, no special access to secret information. No, it was just a matter of continuously improving their performance and training them over the years. So this is a definite proof that peak performance can transform you into an elite performer that can win in anything that you do in life. And after I learned about this and I really studied what was going on, I realized there were four keys that were leveraged here to truly transform them into elite grand master. First, reprogramming your subconscious to become an elite performer. This one is huge because as Mihaly Tse Mihaly, oftentimes called the godfather of flow, also Hungarian psychologist who has spent the most time studying flow states, he recently passed away, he find out that the conscious mind, the part that we are aware of, can only process 120 bits of information per second. Instead, the subconscious mind that we're not even aware of can process 20 million bits per second minute. So safe to say 99.7% of the data that we collect in our day to day is sits outside of our conscious perception. So if we want to truly become the best at something, we need to have conscious and subconscious working in unison because performance problems arise when you're consciously trying to do something your subconscious doesn't feel can be done, right? So it's a friction between conscious and subconscious. And how do you tame your subconscious, well, you commit to achieving a specific goal. Because once you commit, you set out a cascading effect in which you signal your brain to filter out any information that is not directed toward that 
go. The specific part of the brain that does this is called the reticular activating system, which is a part of the brainstem that mediates what goes into your conscious awareness. Out of the 20 million bits per second, the subconscious mind is perceiving what exactly goes into your consciousness. So once you commit to something, you signal your brain to start seeing more of that thing. This is when you're going to buy a specific type of car, you start seeing the car everywhere because you have conditioned your brain to filter out any car that is not the one you're willing to buy. So the way to reprogram your subconscious is to commit to only doing that thing, only purchasing that car, only mastering that skill. When Holgar set up his experiment, he purposely did not teach any other skill to her children apart from chess skills and everything that they needed to build a career. All they did was train, sleep and breathe chess. That's it. So over time, their brain could only filter in information related to chess and becoming a better chess player and build an international chess career. So if you truly want to become an elite, for instance, an elite entrepreneur, and there's a series of skills that you need to master, tell your brain that this is important for you. Commit to mastering them, whatever that is, copywriting, media buying, doesn't matter, and just work on it. Don't get distracted. Don't allow all their interferences into your mind. Don't try to build more than one business at the same time. Truly focus on mastering what's in front of you, and your brain will help you filter out anything that doesn't need to be done at all. And then this leads me to point number two, because you may subconsciously be inclined to just do one thing, but distractions are always going to abound. And the way that behavioral scientists have found that you can make sure you don't get deviated it was something called the annulesis pack, which is one of the most replicated and researched back concept in behavioral science. In essence, annulesis pack is a pack you do with yourself to keep your commitments. So you sign a paper that states that you're not going to deviate from the task that you committed on doing. So for instance, Holger asked their children to sign notes saying, I'm going to become the best possible chess player I could ever become. They committed subconsciously and consciously to that specific goal. And what this does psychologically, it creates an effect of what is called perceived importance. Is when you start weighing as more important the things that you have committed to, and you become more naturally able to fight off distractions. Because if a distraction is not aligned with your commitment, you graciously let it go. You do not entertain thoughts or ideas that are not aligned with your commitment. Research prove, and this is very interesting, that the more perceived importance a task has for you, the easier it is to access a flow state, which is an altered state of consciousness, which you feel your best and perform your best in that specific task. If something is really crucial for you, it's going to be much more easy to access a flow state. And you can become four to even five times more productive, so you can reach your goal four to five times faster. This is what Polgar helped her children become grandmasters at record speed and they were the first female elite chess players in history right so we first subconsciously filter out anything that is not the goal then we commit to the goal so our mind naturally is drawn towards those tasks nonetheless this is not enough because the third step is absolutely crucial and i'm sure you've heard this before that you end up becoming the average of the five people you spend the most time with and why is that because of the environment you inhabit shapes your behavior we are social creatures that we cannot exist on a vacuum we need to operate within an environment and that environment shapes our choices directs our mindset and over time dictates our standards the standards in your environments are going to drive the standards in your behavior because behavior is always downstream of environment as i like to say you shouldn't be using your willpower every day except for designing an environment that naturally nudges you into the best behavior you need to deploy. So the third step is to master your environment. What Polgar did is that she did not allow anything that did not pertain to the goal in his house. Everything that he was discussed, every information that was shared, every activity that they did, every 
person that the sisters were friends with were also chess related. They were part of their chess universe. And the standards were so high, the perceived importance of what they were doing was so high that they had no other choice but to push her themselves every single day super hard. Since there were three sisters and the standards were high across the board, they were consistently making each other better and better every day. So over time, that environment of excellence created an upward spiraling feedback loop that could not help but make them incredibly successful at the art of chess. And that is step number three, is having an empowering environment. But it's still not enough. You need four, which is the secret ingredient, which is personalized feedback through mentoring or coaching. That is very important because we all have blind spots. No one is perfect from the get-go. Where things we don't even know about ourselves, we cannot even see, we are not consciously aware that they're not working. So what Polgar understood very well is that he needed to provide personalized feedback to each one of the three kids, but also bring in older experts, older grandmasters that could teach the girls how to improve over time because he himself had blind spots. So over time, he created all of this environment that was constantly elevating those standards and getting actual real feedback through mentoring and private tutoring and coaching to make them better, to adapt to their specific circumstances. Because the three sisters did not play in the same way. They did not have the same style of chess. So over time, they were able to move forward so much faster. And this is why they ended up, all of them becoming chess grandmaster at different times in their lives and different events. When I first realized this, when I first started the business, I realized that I needed personalized feedback and coaching in order to really become better. So I bought every course I could on sales, marketing, offer creation, email marketing, positioning, all sorts of skills that I had no idea how to do. And I still do it to this day. It, to me, it's absolutely fundamental to spend money on education because the return on investment is the highest it could ever be, really is invaluable. And this leverages this psychological principle of personalized feedback. If I get help exactly on what I need when I need it, if I do just in time learning, I am able to become so much better, faster than anyone else. And Polgar already knew this was the key to his children's success. So this is the core concept, right? Greatness is taught. You're not born a genius. You transform yourself into one. Everybody is an average performer in the beginning. The goal is to become an elite performer and win at whatever game we choose to play. And there's four mechanisms that Polgar leveraged to make this happen with his kids. One is to train the subconscious to only focus on the things that are meaningful and filter out everything that is not meaningful. Then two is to condition the conscious mind to avoid distractions, to let go of anything that is not what needs to be done. And then three is to set up the right environment with the right standards to sustain excellence, to make sure that nobody deviates from the path, that no unwanted inputs come into an environment that derail the experiments. And four, seek to provide coaching and personalized mentoring from himself, but also from others to his children to become better. I leverage all of these four things to become first a director of private equity and then an entrepreneur. And I encourage you to think about how can you apply this into your own life? What is the thing that you can commit to so your subconscious filters out everything that is not that? How can you leverage and you use this pact with yourself to consciously become aware of the things that you're letting go of in pursuit of something better? How can you elevate your standards across your environment to become better over time? And who do you need to seek mentoring and coaching from to become the absolute best you could be? If you want a specific help on how to become an elite performer, you can book a call with us below. And of course, until next time.